Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, my name is Nez and I'm a second year medical student studying in Malaysia. And in this video, I'll be talking about the 10 things that I learned in my first year of medicine. I hope that by sharing the things that I learned, you guys will also learn something from my experiences and I hope that it benefits you. Everything that I talk about will be timestamped in the description box below so you can just skip around to the parts that interest you the most. And without further ado, let's get on with the video. So the first thing that I learned to do is to maximize my time. And even though it sounds very simple, it, it actually is something that helped me to use my time more efficiently and make sure that I'm not using too much time for anything. And the reason why this is so important is because in university and in medical school, most of our time is spent studying. And time for us is like a very, very limited asset. So if we are able to maximize our time, then we are able to make sure that we are learning everything that we are supposed to and also to make sure that we have enough time for us to relax and also to spend on other things. So how I maximize my time is by studying consciously. What I mean by that is that when I'm studying, I try to be conscious of how I'm using every single minute. So if I'm studying for one hour, I try to make sure that I'm focusing for the entire hour. So because I'm conscious of what I'm doing, right, I'll be able to catch myself getting distracted or catch myself uh, blanking out very quickly. Just because I'm at the table looking at my lecture notes doesn't mean that I'm actually studying. So I find it really important to uh, make sure that when I am at my study table, when I'm looking at my lecture notes, I'm actually actively learning. I'm actually like absorbing what I am looking at and not just like, you know, blanking out every now and then. The second thing that I learned is identifying the type of learner you are will bring you a long way. Just this simple thing of finding out what kind of a learner I am has really helped me uh, use my time a lot more efficiently because I'm able to change my study methods to target the kind of learner that I am. So personally, I'm an audiovisual learner. So listening and using visual cues is are the two ways that really help me to absorb information better. So ever since I entered medical school, my learning style has changed completely as compared to before medical school. I mean, I wouldn't say that how I used to learn previously was uh, not effective for me, but it's just that it, it took me a longer time to absorb information using my previous learning method as compared to now. And another thing that I also have been using uh, for, and which has really helped me a lot is active recall. Basically, I, tr I make questions for myself and I test myself these questions so that uh, I'm able to remember this information through active recall. And being an audiovisual learner, I make use of uh, videos and uh, animation kinds of uh, lecture videos to help me absorb information and for me that has really really been very effective uh, to help me with my studies. So after investing a little bit more time into adjusting my uh, study method to suit my learning style, it has really helped me to make use of my time more efficiently and it has helped me to absorb information more efficiently as well. So before medical school, I used to basically just go through my lecture notes thoroughly and write down everything, every new thing that I learned. Every single time before an, a major exam, right, I would go through my lecture notes like from start to finish and, every, and I'll just write down any kind of information that I'm learning. And at that time, I thought that it was really effective for me. But in reality, it was very, very time consuming and I used to spend hours and hours and hours doing that when I really didn't have to. I could have used the method that I'm, that I'm using right now during um, medical school and I would have learned the same amount of information, if not more, within a much lesser amount of time. So my current learning method is based around more of uh, using active recall, using visual cues and using like videos to help me understand and absorb information better and for me that has really helped me a lot. So I'm, I'm planning to make another video on, on how I use active recall in medical school so I'll just link that video later to this video. Uh, but basically I highly advise you to take a little bit of time to just find out the kind of learner that you are because that will really help you a long way. So the third thing that I learned is that skipping lectures is not cool in medical school. Personally I don't, I try not to skip lectures at all. And looking back, I realized that that has helped me a lot in my studies because a large percentage of the information that I absorb is actually during lectures and also like uh, the time around it. So what I mean by that is that normally before a lecture, I would pre-read my lecture notes. 
during the lecture, I will try to listen as much as possible and after the lecture, I will try to review my whatever I have learned. So in medical school, lectures are really really important because a lot of the information that we are tested on during exams come from the lecture notes and the lectures. And during the lectures, the lecturer will be explaining the concepts and they will be emphasizing on certain concepts that they think are super important. And a lot of the times the lecture the lecturers also try to, you know, emphasize on information that uh, have a very high likelihood of coming out during the exam. So if you miss the lectures, you're gonna miss this super valuable information that could have helped you um, in your exams. And personally, a huge portion of the information that I learn is actually during lectures. So pre-reading, attending the lectures and reviewing the lecture notes after uh, the lecture for me has really really helped me a lot in uh, absorbing information. Uh, it, it has probably been one of the single most like useful thing that has helped me in my studies. The fourth thing that I learned is to look at the bigger picture and then zoom in. So as a first year medical student, a lot of the times we don't really see the grand scheme of things. We don't see how this piece of information fits into the grand scheme of things. So if we try to look at the bigger picture and try to connect between different concepts and different information, then we're able to understand the information better. And the great thing about looking at things from a bigger picture and then, you know, connecting the dots is that not only does it help you to understand the concept better as a whole, but it also helps you to strengthen your understanding of other concepts as well. So an example that I can give you is, for example, tuberculosis. Uh, in the Southeast Asian countries such as Singapore and Malaysia, tuberculosis is an endemic disease. Um, and so in our medical curriculum, it is very emphasized upon. So in tuberculosis, when we study about the pathogenesis, um, tuberculosis is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis, which is a bacteria. So when we study about how, how the, that bacteria causes the disease, we, we are also recalling information from, from immunology and pathology because there is inflammation, there is a granulomatous inflammation, the T cells that are involved, all of that are, is, has to do with immunology and pathology, right? And then when we study about the treatment of tuberculosis, for the treatment of tuberculosis, there are four drugs that are first-line drugs for TB. And when we study about them, we are also learning about pharmacology as well. And also when we are studying about the bacteria itself that causes tuberculosis, we are also learning about uh, microbiology, about antimicrobial drugs, and that also helps us to recall information from these subjects. In order to test whether a patient has the antigen for of tuberculosis, we give them the tuberculin sensitivity test. And when we do that, it's actually a hypersensitivity reaction that occurs. So that ties in back into immuno immunology as well. So like when we are learning about this one disease, there are so many different things that are related. Immunology, pathology, microbiology, pharmacology. So when we are learning about this one disease, we are also able to recall information from the other disciplines, the other subjects, and that strengthens our understanding of tuberculosis, but also strengthens our understanding of the other sub of the other concepts. So every time I approach a new topic or a new subject, I always try to look at the bigger picture before zooming in, because then I'll be able to understand the picture on a more whole, holistic level. The details are important. Don't get me wrong, the details are very important. But it's just that we need to look at the bigger picture first before zooming in so that we know what are the more important concepts. Okay, the fifth thing that I learned is don't focus too much on the details. So I know that this kind of contradicts with my previous point, but what I tell myself is that all information are equally important, but some information are more important than others. We are presented with a lot of information, like really a lot of information, and sometimes it can get really overwhelming. But what we need to keep in mind is that some of this information is very high yield whereas some of this information isn't so high yield. So we need to first master the information that is more high yield as compared to the other information. So what I'm saying is that don't focus too much on like every single detail and trying to get every single detail to memory because, it, because we are human beings and um, it's not possible for us to know so much information. Instead, what we should do is focus on the ones that are more high yield, the ones that are more important, for the exams um, and also in the clinics and uh, try to master those information first, try to memorize those information first before going into the less high yield information. So there is this one resource that I've been using recently which is called Med Student Notes. They're basically notes for medical students curated by doctors. So these doctors, they have 
come up with notes with streamlined information and with high yield information that have a higher tendency of showing up in the exams or being clinically relevant. And they have categorized them by the subjects. So there is neurology, immunology, pharmacology, hematology, all of that. And unfortunately, it's not free, you have to pay for it. But currently, they're having a discount of up to 80% off of their notes. And you can also use my code to get an additional 15% off so that it's uh, a lot more cheaper for you guys. So you can definitely check them out. I'll leave the link down in the description box below. One guideline that I try to follow is don't go too much beyond your lecture notes. So the reason why is because most of the information that comes up in the exam actually comes from the lecture notes. And more often than not, your lecture notes are enough for you to, to get all the information that you need. And then if there are things that you don't understand, that's when you uh, venture into the other resources. Alright, moving on to the sixth learning point and that is don't focus solely on your lecture notes. So lecture notes are the first and the most important resource that we need to rely on but it's not the only resource that we should rely on. When there are things within my lecture notes that I don't understand, or when there are concepts that are not very comprehensive in my lecture notes, that's when I look for other resources for information. So there are quite a lot of useful resources that I have been uh, using in medical school that provide a lot of reliable information. I actually have a whole video dedicated to online resources that medical students should know about and I'll link it down in the description box below so you guys can definitely check it out or it will probably come up in the card somewhere here or here so you guys can definitely check it out. Alright, the seventh thing that I learned is to find a study group. So throughout my first year of medical school, I have formed a study group with some friends and I found it really really effective. So I believe that as one person, it is impossible for us to absorb all the information in the medical curriculum on our own. Because we are human beings and the information that is presented is really a lot, so we are definitely bound to overlook certain information. So when we are studying in groups with other people, then while we are discussing, right, we are able to identify the things that we don't know. Before having this study group, I used to always have this feeling that I don't know what I don't know. Since I don't know the gaps in my knowledge, how am I gonna fill these gaps in the first place? So that's why like after I have formed this group with my friends, through our discussions, I'm able to identify the gaps in my knowledge and then zoom in on those gaps. And like study groups are like, they help with a lot of different things. One thing is to find out the gaps in your knowledge. And another thing is to reinforce your existing knowledge. If like, let's say there's a certain concept that my friend doesn't know, but I know. Then when I'm explaining uh, this concept to my friend, then I'm able to reinforce the information that I have learned. I'm a big believer of this phrase, uh, which is the best way to learn is to teach. That's why I find study groups so effective and I feel like within a short period of time, we are able to uh, learn a lot of information, absorb a lot of information and I feel like it's just very, very effective. So I really recommend, if you can, to form a study group with a suitable group of friends and yeah, just use that to your advantage. The eighth thing that I learned is don't hesitate to participate in extracurricular activities. So since we are in university, there are a lot of university activities that we can participate in, such as sports, such as arts, leadership, societies, you name it, they have it. Like universities just have a lot of different activities for people to participate in. And yes, as medical students, our time is very, very limited. But if we are able to manage our time effectively, then I believe that we, are, we will be able to have time to study and also um, invest time into things that we are interested in. But of course, we need to be able to strike a balance between um, our studies and our extracurricular activities. I actually have a video on this as well, where um, a group of friends and I discuss about whether uh, medical students should should uh, participate in extracurricular activities. So you guys can check that out as well. All right, so the ninth thing that I learned is that where I study affects how I study. And like different people have different preferences for the, the types of places that they like to study at. I think that it is quite 
uh, good to invest some time into like finding out which are the places that you study the best in. I, I think that it's also important to identify whether you know you study well with music, without music, or with only instrumental music. The, the type of music that you listen to can also affect how alert you are or how much information that you absorb. So that's definitely uh, important for you to identify as well. So personally, I realize that I do not study well in my room at all. I just get distracted. My bed is right there, right beside me. And how can I not ignore my bed? Like, <laughs> so, uh, so I, I try not to study in my dorm room. And also, I realize that I don't like to study in super quiet places because I also tend to get distracted when I study in really quiet places. Like for some reason, um, when I'm studying in really quiet places, my mind starts to drift off. I actually tend to study better in very weird places. Like for example, in my university, there is this uh, garden outside our library and nobody studies there except me. For me, like that area, like being surrounded by nature and like you know, trees and birds chirping for some reason, it helps me to study, I don't know. <laughs> but I also study in the library as well, uh, which is a very normal place for people to study. <laughs> Actually, basically the thing is that the places that are the most effective for me to study, right, it's not always the same. So it really depends. So I always like to switch my places. So if you're also the, the kind of person that likes to switch between like different places, and if that helps you as well, then you can try that as well. I feel like switching helps me to stop uh, drifting off and stop uh, losing focus. Knowing these kinds of details will also help you to maximize your study sessions and make sure that you uh, focus during your study sessions, which ties in to my first point, uh, which is to maximize your time. Okay, moving on to the 10th and last learning point. This is the last thing, but it's definitely not the least important. I learned that mental health is very important. And mental health is really not something to overlook. Um, as university students, we really have a lot of pressure on our shoulders. We have a lot of, you know, we have a lot of expectations, a lot of commitments. Um, our schedule is always really packed. So it is normal for us to, you know, uh, burn out. So that's why I think that it's really important to take some time off whenever you can to just um, relax, to de-stress and to just take some time for yourself to recharge. I think that it's really important to take care of our mental health and not overlook it because it will help us in the long run. So I just wanted to end this off with that. Alright, so that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn your post notifications on so that you can get notified whenever I upload a new video. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Because I'm doing this for the th